Hello, my name is Frank Mulvaney. I'm the pastor of this church here, Visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Philadelphia, PA. We celebrate today the fifth Sunday in Lent. We read in the Gospel of John, some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour, but it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The gospel, the good news of the Lord. When I was 16 years old, we had a tragedy occur on our block. Many of us were getting our driver's licenses, and as often the case, you know, novices new to driving, we, we weren't very skilled. We didn't really know how to handle uh, the machinery of a car. So one afternoon, we were all hanging out. It was after school. Uh, we were all sitting on top of this car. Our friend was in there, and he was, he was playing. And uh, we really shouldn't have been, but there was a group of us uh, hanging out on this car. And one of our friends, Mark, was sitting on the trunk of the car. Uh, and the person who was in the driver's seat, uh, who I don't think had a license at that time, uh, tried to scare him, tried to frighten him, play with him a little bit, and accelerated a little bit. Uh, he certainly meant to just go maybe three or four feet real quickly, uh, he hit the gas um, and then thought he was hitting the brake just to kind of scare Mark off the back of the trunk. Uh, unfortunately, he panicked. He actually hit the gas again and so accelerated even more. Uh, and then in his panic, he slammed on the brakes. Of course, Mark fell off the trunk. He fell backwards and hit the back of his head. Uh, he was semi-conscious. He did seem to lose consciousness for a minute, but uh, we were young. You know, we were tough. He wanted to tough it out. Uh, didn't really tell his mom. We did go home. He did tell his mom what happened. His mom urged him to go to the hospital. Uh, he didn't think he had to. Mark went to sleep that night, and he never woke up. He was rushed to the hospital. He had lost consciousness this time for good. Uh, his brain had swelled because of the, of the injury, the damage, and, and he died. Uh, he died early the next morning. It was a tragedy. It was an accident. Um, it was Mark was the only son uh, of that couple. We didn't see them much after that. You know, Mark was our friend, but we didn't see them much after that. But the rumor went around the neighborhood that Mark's mother had been so traumatized by this, uh, she left his room exactly as it was. She couldn't enter the room to gather his things, clean it, change the linens on the bed, pack up his clothes, maybe even save a few pictures. Um, it was the rumor that went around the neighborhood, and that's not all that uh, uncommon. Indeed, it was about a, a year later that that couple, still certainly traumatized by the loss of their, of their only son, a teenage son, uh, moved out of the neighborhood. And they did ask a few of us to help them pack the house. And it was as we said, uh, as had been said, the room had not been touched. Uh, this trauma, uh, this damage, this wound, became uh, for her uh, a fixation. Yeah. 
And that's what happens. That's really the nature of sin. It causes us to be obsessed, to be obsessed with loss and, and with death and the things that have, been, that have happened to us. Part of our Lenten journey and Jesus encouraging us today is, is to let things go. We have to let things go. It doesn't mean that the, the hurt and the damage and the painful memories will ever go away. They certainly will not. But they can be healed. And they can be healed through hope. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it gives life. We are called to die. Whoever loves his life in this world will, will lose it. <clears throat> but whoever loses it for me and my sake will gain it. That's a hard gospel. That's a hard gospel for Mark's mom and dad to hear. And yet it is true. This life is passing. Jesus came in the fullness of his divinity and inhabited a human body. But he teaches us that we have to let go of this life. Just as he is going to die, we have to die to ourselves. Die to sin. Die to these old ideas. As Jesus says, follow me. My death is only temporary. The glory of my life is permanent. So we have to, as hard as it is, to examine our trials, to examine our wounds, and to sometimes just let them die, die to sin. Let it go. There's an old legend that when, uh, when these serpents would, would bite you, when these vipers, these great vipers, especially the cobra, they would mem mesmerize you. You know, they would look into your eyes and they would mesmerize you to paralyze you, to stun you and then sting you as you as you were mesmerized and obsessed with the eyes. There's some truth in that. You know, sin is oftentimes uh, compared to, and the actual word for venom is often used for sin, the poison of sin. And it does to us sometimes what, what it did to Mark's mother. It captures our mind, it, it obsesses us, it frees us and paralyzes freezes us, paralyzes our body. And it's the only thing that we can think of. We become obsessed, and focused, fixed, fixated on that drama. Jesus says, let the grain of wheat die. Let it bear fruit. Bear fruit in belief in him. That's the fruit, that we believe in Christ Jesus. That we believe in this eternal life. That we believe that nothing that happens to us in this life can prevent us from enjoying eternal life with Christ if we believe, whether we die uh, an old age after a full life, or we die tragically as a young man as Mark did. Today's dialogue that Jesus uh, calls, and, and he reminds us that the grain of wheat must die for it to produce a great field and great fruit, comes right before his death, and it's initiated by some Greeks who want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. Seems for, for Jesus, that was a trigger for him. He had an understanding now that his word of truth, his word of hope and salvation, now had reached out beyond the borders of Galilee and, and Jerusalem into the Greek territories, now the pagan world. Now his message of who he was was spread. We want to see him. We want to see him. Brothers and sisters, as difficult as it is, let's let our past traumas die. Die to something within yourself. You know, during this time of Lent, the word Lent means springtime. And oftentimes in spring, we, we prune dead branches off of trees. Sometimes fields are purposely burnt to burn away the underbrush, to clear away all of those tangled bushes and vines and weeds that are really dead and choking the death of, of larger trees. They're burned away. And in that ash, in that soil, in that freedom and greater access to light and fresh air, new life springs forth. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. We're the fruit. Where are the fruit? Those Greeks that wanted to see Jesus, they were the fruit of his labors and God working through them. It's there for us. So be aware of that. Examine yourself this day. Examine where you are, you are fixated. And ask the Lord to heal that. Ask the Lord to help you to let that go. 
He always says it the same. Notice how we often hear the cross and resurrection are always together. Jesus is saying his name is going to be glorified and, and God is glorifying him. He says, yes, I will glorify my name again in Jesus. And this allows him to die. It allows him to go forward. Adelante, adelante. Go forward. Jesus did not, and neither will we if we believe in him. He did, his story did not end in the tomb and on Good Friday, but on Easter Sunday, resurrection, new life. Remember that sometimes they call us, you know, Good Friday Catholics. We don't really believe in Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. We certainly do. And we do because of this scripture and because of our own experience. What in you do you need to let go? What in me do I need to die to? Where can I grow and live again? Jesus invites us to it. We have many, many witnesses. New life is there and waits for us.